All right, so uh, again, I want to welcome you to our 6 p.m. worship service. Um, we are actually still in our series called Beyond Kings and Kingdoms, and we are on week three. And uh, ngayon, this series, we're still studying the book of Daniel. So we're going through it chapter by chapter, although we're going to end at chapter six after, uh, after some time. And uh, the book of Daniel was written while, uh, well, it, it's situated at the time when Israel and Jerusalem and Judah were still in exile while they were in Babylon. So, before we unpack the word, I want to ask this question to everyone. Have you ever bought something or received something that was not authentic? Um, hindi naman fake, pero may na-receive kang bagay na hindi siya genuine. Uh, I remember I got a pair of shoes, uh, and during that time, I think it was, I don't know, it's my first time to hear about vegan uh, leather. So, hindi siya uh, animal skin, but it's vegan leather. And, uh, well, lo and behold, um, after a few times of using it, in fact, uh, parang on the second or the third time pa lang na ginagamit ko siya, uh, some of the pieces of the shoes, yung, yung shoes, started peeling off. And uh, later on, nag-end up, after my fifth use, it was no longer usable kasi masyado ng maraming nabakbak na leather. And uh, I was just, siyempre, I was a bit frustrated. Uh, and siyempre, nahinayangan ako, sayang eh. Like, I just, I mean, it's not an expensive pair of shoes, but still, it was, uh, it cost some money. And uh, yeah, because it was not genuine leather and loan boots. So no choice for an event. I had to replace it with, yeah, finally, leather. Now, anyway, I, I just shared this because uh, it relates to uh, our message tonight. Um, like what I said, we're reading through the book of Daniel. And tonight, we're going to be reading from chapter 3. And uh, this is a time where, uh, this is an account of Daniel's friends. And uh, this time, wala si Daniel. But this is about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And uh, they were put on a tight spot. And they were actually compelled to comply with ungodly practices. And uh, here, actually, their faith is being tested. It's being challenged. So we'll be going through the narrative of chapter 3. Although I'm going I'm to be skipping some parts. Uh, but we're going to be looking at the salient uh, points, salient verses of this chapter uh, as we look at the lessons. But it starts off, it, all, it starts off with King Nebuchadnezzar he decided to build a 90-foot gold statue. Then he asked all of his national leaders, uh, in fact, pati international leaders, the colonies, sabi, uh, leaders from different nations of Babylon, to come and assemble to worship this image, this idol. And uh, the moment now that they start playing the Babylonian beats, may music, may tugs-tugs din sila eh. The moment they start playing the Babylonian beats, the people are expected to bow down and worship. Diba? Parang K-pop lang yan. So, pag nagpatugtog na ng music ang K-pop, sayawan na yung mga tao. Or and they are being idolized by millions across the globe. Diba? So, ito, hindi naman millions or maybe millions, but they're called in to worship this idol. But uh, there's a catch. If you are not worshiping this idol, if you do not worship this idol, then this is what's gonna happen. And we're gonna be reading from Daniel chapter 3, verse 6. And it says here, and whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Verse 7, sabi, Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, uh, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. So yun na, they had no choice. Uh, they worshipped. Uh, but the same, I guess, they were doing this willingly. Okay, so uh, just a few notes. No? Uh, last week, I preached uh, in chapter 2 that at the end of uh, Daniel interpreting the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, he actually called out saying, oh, your God, Daniel, is the God of gods, the King of kings. And he really acknowledged uh, the, the power of the God Almighty. However, all of a sudden, one chapter later, ito na naman siya, from acknowledging that God is the God of God's King of Kings, now he decided to put up a, a statue of gold. And diba, from the dream last time, the, the image that in his dream had different elements, gold, silver, bronze, iron, may iron and clay. But this time, he made the decision to pure gold. Parang uh, some scholars are saying that, uh, kasi he's saying na wala nang ibang kingdom, it's just me, pure gold. Sabi niya. 
So what does this tell us? No, na parang from one chapter, he acknowledged God, and now a few verses later, all of a sudden, it's like a quick turnaround. What does this tell us? Well, especially you know, talking about beyond kings and kingdoms, of course, meron din tayong element of what's happening. We're praying for our nation. Uh, tomorrow is the election. Um, well, what I'm saying is this, we need to watch out. If we have placed our hope on humanity or, or a personality, diba? we cannot and should not idolize our candidates. I know I'm, it's good that we're, ca- we're, we're campaigning or we're supporting our candidates, um, but diba? Uh, in case uh, there will be a time wherein we need to challenge them, we will not be afraid to challenge them as well. Diba? So, pero alam ko, it's just, sa 6 p.m. service, wala naman yata ang ganun because we know diba, that we are not idolizing our candidates. But you know, outside, of course, there are people who do. And uh, like what I said, in case um, diba, we, our, our preferred candidates um, should campaign for things that are not in accordance with Scripture, we should be vigilant and we should un- be unafraid. Wag tayong matakot to speak up. Diba? And, uh, especially if they start pushing that na things that are contradicting the Word of God. Diba? Kasi this is, I, I want to ask this to everyone. Diba? What if your candidate wins? And a few months or years later, starts proposing or signing laws that are contrary to the Word of God. Diba? Again, what will we do? And uh, diba, what if they start, you know, sabi, when sins are decreed as law, diba? when sins are being decreed na as law, then as Christians, we are called to make a stand against unrighteousness. Yun pa rin tayo. We are for God. We are not... Uh, we are not idolizing our candidates. So it's good that we're campaigning. I'm not saying don't, but at the same time, should they start pushing for un- uh, ungodly matters? Just like what's happening here, kay, uh, kay Nebuchadnezzar, na parang okay na siya sa simula, nag-end up, hindi rin pala siya okay. As Christians, it's, uh, it's just that we take, at, uh, we take a stand na against unrighteousness. And the reality is this, some people may post like, yeah, they're okay, just like Nebuchadnezzar, then, but later on, present themselves as ina ungodly na mapla meron silang things that are contradicting. So the first lesson that I wanna share as we are reading uh, this chapter is this: our eternal security is from God and not from humanity or a personality. Kaya nga, let's not idolize our candidates. Let's not uh, place our hope on humanity because at the end of it all, we can find security from God and not from humanity, not from a personality. Diba? Nebuchadnezzar, he acknowledged God and now there's a quick turnaround. The Chaldeans, ito pa, isa pa to. Uh, remember, it's the Chaldeans um, who spared, uh, who got spared because of what Daniel did. And, uh, but now, if you look at the word that I just, uh, the verse that I just read earlier, uh, oh, the verse, if you continue on, then actually it's the Chaldeans who will be reporting them, who will be accusing Sila Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Diba? Again, when sin was being decreed, we can actually see these three and uh, how they responded, how they took a stand against unrighteousness. So verse 8 continues, Therefore, at that time, uh, at, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. Again, ulitin ko, yung Chaldeans na to, um, the only reason why they're breathing right now is because Daniel interpreted the dream and made sure, parang he had that desire to save these people, these enchanters, magicians, et al. Kung sino pa yan, di ba? Uh, Daniel saved them. Now, these very people turned their backs against uh, the Jews, uh, particularly Dan- the, the friends of Daniel. And they reported the Jews. And this is what they said about them. Uh, verse 12, sabi, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Si Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Again, the three made a stand not to bow down to the idol. They know who they are. They are Jews. They, they know where they came from. They know their God. In fact, as Jews, uh, it's basic that they should know the Ten Commandments. Basic na yun. If you know, even tayo as Christians, we have studied the Ten Commandments. And uh, and Nebuchadnezzar was telling them they should bow down to the, the, the image, the golden image. And when they were, and now the other, the other, the Chaldeans were saying, itong mga to, itong tatlong to, they don't want to do that. So, uh, but again, as, uh, as Jews, they knew. 
Uh, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 3, sinabi sa Ten Commandments, you shall have no other gods before me. Verse 4, you shall not make for yourself a carved image. Verse 5, you shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. Basic, basic, yet their conviction, their beliefs, are, uh, they were being compelled to let go of these things. Again, just one chapter ago, Nebuchadnezzar was okay, and now he's not. He's, pre- he's putting pressure on, the, on these three to give up God and serve Nebuchadnezzar's gods. Diba? One noteworthy thing lang, now when we look at the verse, sinabi sa verse 12, kasi, there are certain Jews whom you have appointed. So when they were accusing uh, the Jews, they didn't mention lahat ng Jews. They, the Chaldeans didn't say, all the Jews did not want to bow down to God, uh, to, to the idol, but instead, there were certain Jews. In fact, they only named three. Diba? It's just uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So, um, and uh, can you imagine now, majority of the people who were in the same predicament as these three, parang there's, uh, we can just siguro overanalyze, or maybe analyze that these, the, other, the rest of the Jews probably bowed down and compromised their ideals. Diba? Uh, I wonder what happened to them that they did not make that stand. And the, the reality is, uh, when I was talking to this, the same can happen for us Christians. Um, many Christians claim to be Christian, um, but it's more of a cultural, uh, it's more of a cultural thing, cultural compliance, or uh, it was something that has been uh, embedded in life. As Christians, we go to church or maybe we even attend certain church events. But, um, diba, are there things that we have not fully surrendered to God? Diba? There are some who claim to be Christ followers yet bow down to idols. I'm not, maybe not a, an idol, not a statue, but uh, an idol, actually I love the definition of Pastor Paul Barker in one of his lectures. Uh, Pastor Paul Burke is one of our pastors in uh, every nation, um, also in the U.S. And he said, idols basically is this. It's anything that replaces God. Anything where people find their identity, value, and security. So if you find your value, identity, and security in money, then money can be an idol. Or maybe if you find your identity, value, and security sa trabaho mo, sa title mo, doctor, attorney, or whatever, uh, sir, ma'am, diba? then it could be an idol. Or maybe our idol could be our social circles or relationships. Diba? Basta anything that replaces God is an idol. So if you look at it, uh, in this scenario, most of the Jews seemed like um, they compromised and bowed down. Except for the three. Except for, the, except for Daniel's friends. So uh, in life, um, we will go through things like this where our faith will be challenged. Our faith will be questioned. Our faith, our, our, that the authenticity of our faith will be tested. And sometimes, you know, trials are necessary to prove our faith's authenticity. So, Dan, so nangyari ito, Daniel's friends were called in because sinumbong nga sila ng mga Chaldeans. And of course, King Nebuchadnezzar was furious. Diba? Uh, and now they are face to face with the most powerful man in the nation. And uh, just like what I shared kanina, the authenticity of their faith and their convictions are going to be tested. Again, galit na galit si King Nebuchadnezzar, verse 13. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. So they brought these men up before the king. And verse 14, sabi, Nebuchadnezzar answered and said to them, Is it true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image that I have set up. Verse 15, Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image that I have made, well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God who will deliver you out of my hands? So, <clears throat> we may be brought into a, a similar situation. In life, there will be trials. It may not be a force. Hindi naman tayo tatapon sa incinerator. But, you know, there could be 
uh, a metaphorical uh, representation of what that is. Uh, especially right now, there are a lot of things going on. Uh, the, the tension when it comes to the election is really high. It may be like a fiery furnace for, for some of us because uh, uh, we get uh, bashed or whenever, or we have, uh, there are people that uh, maybe para na offend sa atin or na offend natin, and now there's tension, and now the, the authenticity of our faith uh, will be questioned, or maybe we are going through difficulties in life. Um, you may be in a situation where somebody is sick in the family. Diba? But the question in all of these things, when our faith is being tested, where does it lie? Where does our faith lie? Uh, I was talking to some of the pastors uh, as we were discussing this chapter. And uh, if you look at the context again of uh, Daniel, remember Jeremiah 29.11. Um, when Daniel, the book of Daniel, uh, was sharing this, when they were in exile, Remember the promise of Jeremiah 29, 11 was that God will prosper us not to, and he will, his plan is to prosper us, not to harm us, plans to give us a hope in the future. But look at this situation now. Dan, uh, not Daniel, but the friends of Daniel are about to be thrown into the fiery furnace. Parang, Lord, akala ko ba, uh, plans to prosper us, not to harm us, to give us a hope in the future. Eh, bakit may fiery furnace right before us? And uh, I love how he explained it. Because the promise, when God made that promise, it wasn't to an individual, but it was a promise to the church, to the, to the, to the nation of Israel, to the theocracy. And even if people go through uh, in challenges like this, but not all of them will come out unscathed, unscathed. But we can bank onto the faithfulness of God that later on we will see that uh, even though God allows certain things to happen, it actually has a purpose that will ultimately bring prosperity to the people of God. And it will bring growth to the people of God. So, what happened? Verse 16. Uh, because now they were being tested. Verse 16 says, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. And uh, verse 17, if this, uh, if this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. And verse 18, but if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. Wow, this is the stance that we want to have. That first, of course, whenever we go through fiery trials in life, diba? we will hold on to the promises of God. We will hold on to the truth that God is sovereign in every situation. That we know that God is in control and uh, He knows what He is doing. So even in the midst of what's happening in our nation right now, election is tomorrow, diba? we can hold on to the fact that God is sovereign. Yes, we are still, we have a part to play, Kaya nga, uh, we are going to be responding to the things that are happening in the world right now, but we still need to trust in the sovereignty of God and we still need to understand the truth that He is still in control. Diba? In this situation, um, ito, the friends of Daniel said na, yeah, God will deliver us from the fiery furnace. But I love also their trust in God in verse 18. But if not, sabi nga nila, if it doesn't happen, they will still not compromise their convictions. But are we going to be the same? That <clears throat> whenever we go through difficulties in life, or whenever we go through that, yung testings where you know, a fiery furnace, will we compromise our convictions? I hope we don't. So, what happened was Nebuchadnezzar got angrier. So, ginawa niya, sabi niya, why don't you heat up the oven, the incinerator, seven times hotter? Or basta, sobrang much hotter. Sabi, seven times now. And grabe, uh, medyo exaggerated yung response niya, yet the three did not waver. It was in a way, a th he was continuously threatening them. Oh yeah, na, mas mainit na yan, sunog na sunog kayo dyan. But yet the three did not waver. So, because the king's order was urgent, <clears throat> and the furnace overheated. The flame of the fire killed those men who took Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
Grabe rin yan, no? Tinali sila, and then nung dinadala sila sa furnace, it was super hot already that it killed the people who brought them there. Verse 23, And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell bound into the burning fiery furnace. So God allows for our faith to be tested. Uh, just like what happened with these three, we need to resolve in our hearts not to waver no matter what happens, especially tomorrow or especially this coming week. That we need to make that resolve Now, you know, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I'm going to vote for my candidate. But if my candidate does not win, I will trust you anyway. I will remain faithful to you. Diba? The question is, yeah, will we, will we, will we give in to the pressure of the world to compromise? Will we be amenable to unrighteousness or will we stand our ground? Diba? Eventually, what if our candidate wins? Will we, will we fight unrighteousness? <clears throat> then this happened in verse 24 and 25. Then King Nebuchadnezzar was astonished and rose up in haste. He declared to his counselors, did we not cast three men bound into the fire? They answered and said to the king, True, O king. Verse 25, He answered and said, But I see four men unbound, walking in the midst of the fire, and they are not hurt. And the appearance of the fourth is like a son of the gods. Grabe, no? Three people entered the furnace. And Nebuchadnezzar saw four. And sinasabi nga, it looks like there is a divine presence inside the incinerator. And scholars actually believe that this was a Christophany. Uh, a Christophany is a physical appearance of Christ before His incarnation. So again, this is a, a, an inference of some of the scholars. It could be an angel that God sent there. But nonetheless, there was a divine presence there. there this was actually a physical demonstration of God's presence with believers during this stress. If you remember, but even Psalm 23 verse 4 says, Though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil for He is with us. So just like that, but even when they were going through, really, literally, the, a very dangerous moment in their life, God was with them. God saw them through. And I think it's the same applies to you and to me. Um, we may have experienced it already or we may be experiencing it palang in the future where we could be experiencing the most difficult days of our life. But the, the promise is this, that God will be with us. God will see us through. God will be holding on to our hand. And we may not be delivered immediately from that situation. Like what I said, if we get thrown into the incinerator right now, a fiery furnace right now, chances of us surviving, I don't know, probably much less than Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, but through the ordeal that we may be facing, we can trust that God will be with us. God's presence will be with us. That's why we can be at peace. Oh, sure, well, we are lobbying for, for whoever we want to win. But in case you're, or the candidate that we voted for does not win, we can still be at peace because we know that God is with us and He will not let us go. Verse 26. Then Nebuchadnezzar came to the door of the burning fiery furnace. He declared, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out and come out here and come here. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out from the fire. So, to look at verse 28 and 29. Nebuchadnezzar answered and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants, who trusted him and set aside the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their own god. Therefore, sabi ni Nebuchadnezzar, I make a decree. Any people, nation, or language that speaks anything against the god of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be torn limb from limb and their houses laid in ruins for there is no other god who is able to rescue in this way. Grabe, no? Looking at it, they were in a dilemma um, they were in distress, but yet God saw them through. God was with them. Um, their faith was tested and they passed the test. They said, we will not bow down to the gods of Nebuchadnezzar. We will not compromise our convictions. Hindi kami papayag na maging unrighteous just so that we can, you, we can get your favor. Diba? And that is a lesson for us where Sometimes we want to earn the favor of people and uh, we may be tempted to compromise 
I pray that uh, we will not fall into that trap of compromising. And just like what happened, we can see here that uh, the three saw God's favor. Nebuchadnezzar again blessed the Lord. And he called them, uh, and he uh, really commended them for not giving up, uh, for, for setting aside his own command. Sabi nga, setting aside the king's command and yielding up their own bodies rather than to serve and worship any god except the one true God. And kaya nga dumating sa point na si Nebuchadnezzar said, walang gagalaw sa mga yan. You, nobody can speak ill about their God. And if they do, Nebuchadnezzar himself will punish them. Yeah, the, our last lesson for tonight is this. Kasi nga, you don't want to put our security on people or, or on personalities or on humanity itself. We can trust, you know, we, we can understand that really our deliverance from, the, from, the, from life's fiery furnace comes from no one else but God. Our deliverance from life's fiery furnace comes from no one else but God. We don't want to place our hope on people or a personality. Yeah, we can trust them, but there limitations. Yan. People at some point will make mistakes or maybe turn around. So that's why we cannot put our absolute trust on people. And, uh, or maybe we may not be delivered from, a predica- from our predicament right now in this world. Again, like what I said, we may be in a financial uh, situation right now or we, somebody is sick, you may be sick right now or you ha- are troubled when it comes to your relationships because of damning offense in the family. And we may not necessarily be plucked out immediately of that situation, but ultimately, we can experience God's deliverance because God's ultimate, uh, God ultimately will rescue us or has rescued us from the eternal fiery pit. So it may not be the same as Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that they rescue from the incinerator. But you know what? God has saved us from the eternal fiery pit called hell. We are eternally secure in Him. God has delivered us. And uh, that's why in John chapter, uh, John chapter 3, verse 16 and 17, it tells us, For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Verse 17, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Him. So, as I close, I just want to, uh, I shared a lot. Uh, there were, uh, I shared life lessons uh, in, the, in Daniel chapter 3. But I want to ask these questions to put focus on ano ba, ano ba, what do I need to bring home. Number one, where is my hope anchored on? This is a good question that we can ask ourselves. Where is my hope anchored on? Is my hope anchored on God or on a personality? Number two, will I still trust God even if my prayer requests are not yet granted? Number three, will I stand for godliness or will I compromise my convictions? Again, I encourage everyone, go vote. Vote for your candidate. Support your candidate. But in the event that your candidate, the candidate that you voted for rather, um, starts you know, re, uh, legislating or writing ordinances, city ordinances or national ordinances that are contradictory to the Word of God, I pray that you are also as passionate in taking a stand for God. So before we go, um, I just want to encourage everyone, tomorrow again is election day. Before you, before you vote, I uh, just have some reminders. First, review your list of candidates. Review their platform. I'm sure by this time, alam name platform nila, review it. But also, check, uh, do a background check. Review their character, their convictions, and of course, their competence. Number two, Pray. Pray before you vote. In our uh, worship night the other day, uh, I love how Pastor Patrick, Pastor Paul, and Pastor Mark again and again uh, encourage us. Prayer is our primary weapon. So when we, you know, we want to pray for this nation, we want to pray for our candidates, pray also for peaceful, honest, and orderly elections. In your precinct and in your provinces, pray. And as we do this, as we vote, Trust God's will. Um, see, Daniel in chapter, chapter 1 said, God changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings or queen uh, in this case. But nonetheless, whoever that is, 
uh, na si God ang maglalagay sa kanya. So we need to trust God. We need to trust God. Um, whatever the outcome will be, we know God is in control. Amen. So let me pray. Heavenly Father, number two, Lord, we lift up to you first and pray foremost our hearts. Before you vote. Um, Chip night the other day. Lord, this election. Uh, I love how Pastor Patrick, and Pastor uh, Paul, and Pastor Mark again and the, again. The tension is running high. Pa- uh, prayer is all, you know, all positions. So when pray, we, Lord you know, God, we want to pray for this that, nation, uh, first and foremost, our hearts pray also will not for be defiled peaceful, honest in with worldly matters. Yes, we will fight election. for righteousness. We will stand up. Pray. Uh, we will pursue godliness even as we conduct ourselves before will. people. We will continue um, to be a good see, witness, Dan- especially to those who don't know you the yet. One said, God changes but Lord times God, I pray for your Don't will see, removes kings um, and again for your will to be done not case, ours but nonetheless pray Lord God for justice and righteousness as your kingdom God is founded we pray for kanya. peaceful elections so, we pray Lord God that, that there won't be God. any violence um, there won't be any cheating in fact Lord God whatever so the outcome will for be last me. Friday um, I pray Lord God if there will check. be people who, who plan Heavenly Father uh, or who may have or who may be violating you, uh, first and foremost our hearts that, uh, they will be made um, uh, they will be found out and uh, Lord, you're gonna, this election, uh, I Lord, love how them, Pastor Patrick, you're gonna apply Pastor Paul and Pastor Mark Lord. again and again. We know, Lord God, again, your kingdom is founded pa- upon prayer justice is... and righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, because you are sovereign. So when pray, we, Lord, you know, we want to pray for, for our nation, countrymen, we... Lord, that uh, people will choose pray also for wisely, peaceful, Lord, that they will not succumb to the temptation, Lord God, really elections. of compromising convictions. Pray. And I pray, Lord God, as a Christian nation, that there will be fear of the Lord's will. for Not just for the candidates, but also for every voter. I pray, said, Lord God, that we will God look to you times and cast our votes tomorrow. We thank you, Lord kings, God, because your, your sovereign in this case will but give us peace. peace. We lift up to you our nation. See, in God is ang maglalagay sa kanya. Amen. So, and amen. All right, um, that concludes our service. Uh, if you need prayers, actually, you can send me an email. You can email me, georgit at victoryfort.church. Uh, georgit at victoryfort.church, and I'd love to pray with you. God bless you. Uh, see you all next Heavenly week. Father, Lord, we lift up to you, fating, uh, guide, first and foremost, our heart. Lines, Lord, I pray that the hearts, um, they will be made, uh, they will be found out. And uh, Lord, this election, uh, you're gonna, uh, Lord, uh, I love how Pastor Pat, Lord, put them, you're gonna apply Pastor Paul and Pastor my justice sa kanila, Lord. Again and again, Lord. We know, Lord God, but again, your kingdom is found. Pa- prayer is founded upon justice and righteousness. We thank you, Lord God, because you are sovereign. So when we, you know, we want, I pray, Lord, also to pray for this nation, for our countrymen, Lord, that uh, people will pray also for, choose wisely, Lord, peaceful, honest, and order that they will not succumb to the temptation, Lord God, really elections of compromising convictions, Pray. And I pray, Lord God, as a Christian nation, that there will be fear of the Lord. God's will. For not just for the um, see Daniel candidates, but 